Hello guys, welcome back. Now in this tutorial, we will go ahead and set up our first project and then we'll also authorize our developer or we can authorize our org so that we will be able to push code to the Salesforce org or also retrieve code from Salesforce org. Then the next thing is we will also go ahead and create an Apex class. So right now, first thing you have to do is once you have restarted your Visual Studio code is type in control shift P. Okay. Now here, if I type in the word create, you do not see any information on creating an Apex class or creating a lightning component and so forth, right? So the first thing is we need to create a project and there are two options. One is the create the project. And then the second option you have is create the project with a manifest. So you have to go ahead and select this option, create project with manifest. And then once you do that, it'll ask you what type of. So there are multiple options. You have to choose a standard. So there are three options. You see standard empty and analytics, choose the standard one, then enter the project name. Okay. So I'm going to say demo visual studio. This is the name of the project hit enter. That's it. It's going to ask you which location do you want to create this project? So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this thing because I don't need it. And I'm going to go ahead and select this workspace and then hit create project. So what will happen is it is going to create a project for me. And now you can see here, this is the name of the project demo visual studio. And in this project, you will see force under force app. You can see, you can create aura components here right now. We have nothing. Okay. Under classes, there's not no classes in here. Then you have LWC, nothing is there. So no objects, nothing. So nothing is available here. So next thing we need to do is we need to get our Salesforce data into this folders, right? We need to have all the existing classes, all the existing objects, standard or custom permissions. It's everything we need to have it. So under the manifest, there is a file called package.xml. Okay. So this is the file. Basically you can use to tell Salesforce that, Hey, these are the things that I need to import. So I need to get all the apex components. I need to get the apex pages, all those kind of stuff. So the first thing is we will go ahead and uh, right click here and you will see so if you right click there is no connection to the org okay so the next thing we need to do is we need to authorize our org so first thing is we'll again go to our command palette control shift p and i think you can go to command palette by right here so you go to view and then go to command palette okay otherwise control shift p then next thing is we need to authorize okay so we need to authorize an org so let's go ahead and click on the second option here which says authorize an org so sorry, the third option here, authorize an org. And then it is asking you which kind of org. Is it a production one or it's a sandbox? Since we are using our developer's account, it's a production one. So I'm going to say production here. And if you wanted to provide an org alias, you can use. So we can say, we can say VS Code Deepika. This is my alias and hit enter. So now what will happen is it's going to ask your permission to authorize the org. Okay, so it'll open up in an IE. And uh, you have to provide your username. So this is my username. So let me go ahead and uh, copy this username and provide my password. Login. It's asking me for a verification code. So let me go ahead and open my email. So you can see here, this is the email that I've received, verify your identity in Salesforce, and this is my verification code. So let me just go ahead and copy this verification code and paste it over here. So then I'm gonna be authorized. So they can recognize my machine here, and then that's it. Now this is what's happening. So Salesforce CLI, this is the extension that we have downloaded in our Visual Studio. It is asking you to access your basic information, provide access to your data via the web, access and manage your data, perform requests on your behalf at any time. Okay, so we wanted to allow this. And once this has been allowed, then what you can do, you can pull up the data or your code or whatever from Salesforce. And also you can push your changes to Salesforce. Okay, so now we'll go back to our Visual Studio code. Now, if you go here, you will see a lot more options have come once we have authorized. Okay. So the option that we need to choose here is retrieve the source from the org. So whatever the source that we need, whatever the Apex classes, visual force, whatever we need, we will go ahead and click here. 
So I can see here there is no classes available right now. There is nothing here. There are no objects. If you see here, there are no objects, nothing. So we're going to go ahead and right click on this one and we're going to say retrieve the source, retrieve the source in the manifest from all. So just do a right click anywhere and then it's going to retrieve your source from the org. It will get all the apex trigger, lightning stuff, everything. Okay, so this has been done successfully. Now you can see here we created a class with the name demo example. Now this class is pulled up. You can see here. It didn't get any objects because nothing had been listed over here. If you wanted to retrieve the objects, you have to first enter that member over here. Okay, we haven't built any aura components, so you don't see anything. Now in the LWC, if you want to create a lightning web component, you can use this. Now, similarly, we will create another class inside of our Visual Studio, and then we will push this class to our Salesforce org. Okay, so now if I go here and I say create Apex class, you can choose this option by right click. Or you can do control uh, command palette and you can say create and then here you can say apex class. So now we can say the name of the apex class we can sh show them is static example. Okay, this is the name of my class and this is the default directory hit enter. So now we're going to create a apex class. Now this particular class is currently not available in our developer console. So here, if you go back to your developer console and let me go ahead and refresh this one, you will see if you go to the open and uh, the class that we have created is the static example, right? So let me go ahead and hit file open. Let's just go back to the developer console again. So go here, go to the gear icon. So go to this gear icon and go to developer console and here if I go to file and open and if I look for the class that I created static it doesn't appear right only one class exists. So what I can do here is I can go ahead and go back to my visual studio code and write in a method here public static hello me. Okay, system dot of debug, I'm a static method. Okay, there's an error in this code because we haven't put the return type. So public static void, this is one method and then I'm going to create a non-static method. We'll say public void, hello you. Okay, this is the name of the method. I'm just putting some random names, not good ones. System dot debug. Let me just get rid of this one system here. And then here I can say I'm a non-static method. And then make sure you save it. If you don't save it, you will see that black dot next to the class. Okay. So you have to save this. You can either do file and do save or you can do control S. Okay. So once this is done, the class doesn't appear in our org. So what you have to do is you have to right click here. And then you have to deploy this source to the org. So you have to go ahead and hit the deploy source to the org. Now what will happen is this class will get deployed to the Salesforce org. So now if I go back here, make sure it has been successfully deployed. Okay, you can see here deployed has been successfully and it even tells you which org classes it has deployed. Okay, so you can see here, let me close all these. So you can see here these two have been successfully been deployed. Okay static example now if i go back so now if i go to my developer console here and now if i go to file open you will see the static example class has been loaded here so if you guys don't know that there's a difference between a static method and a non-static method the difference is in order for you to call a non-static method you have to create an instance of this class and then only you'll be able to call this. But if it's a static method, then you do not need any instance of this class and you can directly call using the class name. So let me explain to you. So if I go here, open the exe execute anonymous window, and then you can say static example E1 is equals to new of static example E, static example, okay? 
So I've created the object of this class and this is how you create an object by using the new and the name of the class. Okay, then E1 dot. Now, in order for you to call this method, you have to create the instance. Okay, so we already created the instance and now I'm calling the hello you. But this method, since it's a static method, now why is it called a static method? Because it has this static keyword. Since it has a static keyword, you do not need to create an instance of this class. All you need is the name of the class dot of this hello me. So that's all you need. Now I'm going to go ahead and call this static method. And now I'm going to say open log checkbox and then hit the execute. Now if I go to here, it will open the logs for me. And I'm only interested in the debug only and it will tell me I'm a non-static method, I'm a static method. So this is how you create an Apex class inside of your Visual Studio code and you push that code to your org.